you come up and see how to feed my fish? She's playing the piano right now. So what? I don't know which of this stuff they're gonna need. Mom, are you coming back? You better get packed, Tildy. I don't care. Let them starve. I don't care. Both fish are gonna die. All this stuff is five years old. Tildy, just get out of here. I'm coming. Get out of here. Julius Caesar's been drinking out of the toilet again, and Trunk ain't even started to pack. He's just sitting there, plugged in. Trunk! Wonder he don't get electrocuted. These are tube effects ones. Don't drop them on the floor, please. I want please. you to smell them, because you have to know what to smell like when you're dead. Trunk, pack! Oh, Mom, smell Ask Mitchell to smell them. To what's a Ralgan? <laughs> Earaches. Are they going to need all this stuff? You know, if we knew where he was taking them, we might know a little bit more about what to pack. I know. Do you smell these worms, Mitchell? You are going to insist before you turn them over. Of course. Well, you do agree we have a right to know. <laughs> Absolutely. Julius Caesar's scratching the door. Oh, that's a brand new door. Yeah, that's a brand new door. Tilly, hit him. Don't hit him. Should I let him out? Yes, let him out. But hit him first. Don't hit him. Wanna take your home? Don't spill those worms, Truman Paul. Trung, ha! I will. For all we know, he's taking him to the moon. You ready? Yeah. Well, sir, if you need me out with your bags? No, got it. Sure. Frank, Jesse? You know Jesse, my cleaning right, man? Jesse, yeah. All right, how are you? I thought we'd take my car. What for? I don't want you to waste your money on gas. That's ridiculous. I gotta come back this way anyway. That's what I mean. Come back and pick up your car. Well, I don't know. If it'll make you happy, then we'll do it. If it makes me very happy. Then we're gonna do it. Oh, I see it. Give me that. Yeah. You got everything you need? Of course I have everything. You sure? Cash? Yeah. Here, you drive. I can have your bag. Thanks, mommy. Okay, gang. Frank, look at this. These great kids. Terrific. Okay, gang. Have a good time. Bye, JP. Bye, bye, bye. Thank you. Okay, baby. You gonna lock up? Jesse's staying here for the summer on the beach. Are these kids gonna love it. They're gonna love it. Okay, gang. No more time. This guy. That's Trump. Is he adopted? Uh, I was playing a golf tournament in the Philippines. I used to be a golf professional. Mm -hmm. and, and this little boy followed me every hole, every shot. Kind of adopted me. That's great. You used to be a professional golfer? Yes. Were you famous? J.P. Tanner. My mother-in-law's a golfer. Barbara, have you ever heard of J.P. Tanner? No. <laughs> well, it's... Uh, it's been nice to talk to you. <laughs> it's been nice talking to you, too. No, oh, I'm sorry, Truman yeah, Paul. Julius Caesar can't come. Hey, Julius Caesar, Julius Caesar, would you get out of the car? No, Truman Paul, get him out of there. He cannot come. Julius Caesar. Oh. Julius Caesar, well, get, out the the get him out of the car. Julius Caesar, get him out of the car. We don't have room for him. 
He can't sit there. The castle Roman, Would you, you please get the dog out of the cupboard? Yes, oh, that. You have the allergy medicine for two Yes, I've got the allergy medicine for Thank you. I've got enough medicine to keep him alive for 10 years. Ron! We're late! Come on! I hope you've all gone to the bathroom. I don't have time to stop. Truman Paul? That's quite an accomplishment, son. Look at how big you got. Come on out! Everyone's waiting! TP, oh, it's great to see you. Come you on! You got all sporty, dressed on, sporty. That's on. good. Beauty. Hey, Daddy. You know how beautiful she is? Hello, Jamie. Hello, Kathleen. You look great, too, just great. <laughs> God, I forgot how pretty you are. You are beautiful. <laughs> Does that make you uncomfortable? No. Good, it doesn't make me uncomfortable either. Isn't that great? Kids, you see how easy it is to tell your mother she's beautiful? Yeah. Oh, my God. Ah. Yeah. Hey, what? Oh, oh Jamie. Oh, 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 yes. Oh, are you all right? What's up? Oh. Get off this boy. Get, let me at him. <laughs> get him. You get away. Get him both out. What do you want me to do with him? Where is he? An American flight. Oh. Good to see you, kiddo. Daddy, where are we going? Can we go somewhere with horses? I gotta talk to your mother. It's very subject. So, we're gonna find a place where you can get some hamburgers or something. Here, we'll give you some money. See, so that's what daddy's are for. Here, that's for you. For you. Spend it all in one place. And here's the front. Talk to you here. Let's go. Come on. I'm gonna talk to your mommy. Lots of things to do. How do I look? You look terrific. Say beautiful. Welcome. Welcome. Mr. Welker, white. <laughs> <laughs> it's my turn now. Let me show you how to play real simple. <laughs> Egypt. I got passports for everybody. New dresses for Tildy, new clothes for the boys, too. Real nice outfits. Got a shots of the boat. Got everything covered. Egypt? In Athens, Rome. On the biggest, best cruise ship in the Western world. Don't say Egypt again. I don't know what else to say. Can you afford this? 
day. Do you know what a real estate agent's commission is on a $10 million sale? $200,000, that's what I got in escrow. That's just the start. Things have changed for me. What are you talking about? Did I tell you about my idea called Village Green? Can we stick to the subject of It's huge, things? Kathleen. A housing development built entirely around a golf course so that every backyard is like a putting green or something, see? And the front Excuse yard me. looks o looks out on a tee. Listen, I have to go get Mitchell. I left him waiting in the car, okay? Hey, he can wait a second. I want him in on this, too. What for? Because it affects him, too. I want to talk to you. Well, if it's about taking the children to Egypt... It's not about taking the children to Egypt. It's about... How I've changed. No, you haven't changed. You say, pass the sugar and tell me you're taking the children to Egypt. That's typical. I can't tell you how many things this reminds me of. I want to come back into their lives. This cruise launches a new me, Kathleen. As far as the children are concerned, I know I've let you all down. And I'm ready to make a comeback. That's what this is all about. Slow boat to China sort of thing. So we can all sort of get it together. I don't think any of you has ever seen a good side of me. Don't do this. Don't make promises you can't keep. They love you the way they have you. Vacations, phone calls on birthdays. You're a lovely man, James. But they've learned not to rely on you. You take them to the pyramids and let Mitchell take them to the dentist. Please respect how happy we are, okay? I have changed, Kathleen. You just keep your eyes open, Kathy. You're gonna see how wrong you are about your ex-old man. And in case you don't know it, ah, you know it. Hi, Mitch. We're going to Egypt. <laughs> Egypt. Egypt. Where is Egypt anyway? <laughs> Something, huh? Looks like a hotel, Dad. Which boat? This is the boat. This whole thing so is the boat. The woman thought that those were the boats that we're gonna go off. <laughs> Watch out! Just step there. Hello, Look at this. It's just like a hotel. Well, maybe one of them is a, is a waiter. Maybe one of them is a, the guy who steers the ship. Good morning. This is some information about our oh. ship. Would you like to have that? Yes. Dad, look! Elevators on the boat! What's... Here, here you go. Oh. Mention is Captain Hanson. Welcome aboard, Mr. Oh, this is the captain. I'm not sailing. I just came down to say goodbye to my children. This is... I wish it would this is my son, Truman. Well, these are my children. Please meet you. Matilda is the captain. Trump How do you do? The captain. Are we underwater now? Ah, stupid. I wonder if it's underwater. They have a game room here. They have everything here. They got pools, movie theaters, all sorts of stuff. They have loads of kids, too. That's the, that's the great one. Do they have headlights? What do you mean? How do they see at night? Oh, there's nothing to see at night, Truman. There's no ice bird in Egypt, stupid. Hey, don't talk to your brother like that. That's not nice. It's hot in Egypt. They have radar trimmer, Pa. It's perfectly safe. 124, 126, and 128. Okay, uh, guys, listen up. The boys in this room, 128, remember your numbers. I'm going to take the middle room, and Tildy will take 124. Jim, okay? can I speak to you? I'll help Tildy get organized. Jim, could we talk, please? I think it's a good idea if Tildy bucks with Truman Paul. Oh, really? The boys kind of rub each other the wrong way. That'll be fine. 
Yeah, but there's more to it than that. Well, if they're uncomfortable, they can See, always... See, Truman Paul is kind of sensitive about this, but he has nightmares at night. Tilly's very good at handling it. She has a way of waking him up. She likes to look after him. Uh, he won't have nightmares here. He'll be fine. Boys like to stick together. Can I bunk with Tilly? Sure. That's all it takes. I'm not rigid. Tildy, <clears throat> trunk switch rooms. I got all my stuff in there. So switch it. I already put them in the drawers. We'll take it out of the drawers. What a baby. I'm not. Hey, Trunk, is that necessary? It's afraid of the dark. I'm not afraid of the dark. I am afraid of the dark, but not baby. There you go. Now, come on. Move your ass. I'll move. I won't have to move. I'll move. Well, let me help you. Jesus, Trump, what do you got in here? Bricks? Come on. What is it, son? We're reading. Oh, books, huh? Whole suitcase full of books. You must be a real brain. Is this the Tannen family? Oh, yes, it is. Uh, Mr. Tannen? It's me. Hi. How are you? I'm Mandy. Hi, Mandy. I am the children's activities director. Oh, hey. Uh, that is to say, your children's activities director. It appears they're the only children on the ship. <laughs> I'm available for uh, treasure hunts and uh, arts and crafts, children's shore excursions. I'm just going to leave you this brochure. And whenever you need me, just give me a call. Thank you. Going to have a lot of fun. All those going ashore, please do so now. The Vista Shore will be set to sail at exactly 1200 hours. Well, I guess that's it. Come on. Let me kiss. Bye, Mitchell. Trunk. I don't want any more fights. Take care of your fish. I miss you guys. Bye, Mitchell. Oh, gosh, you behave I'm yourself. miss you all. The most wonderful thing about sailing is that you chart your course by the stars. And that's happened over thousands of years. It's something that never changes. East is east, and west is west. Does the ship always walk like this, Dad? Honey, I'm trying to say something very important, and no one is listening. Hey, a man is never lost if he keeps his eyes on the stars. Is there sharks in the ocean? No, there are no sharks. Come on, guys, let's go. When you hear the embarkation signal, which is one long, continuous blast, you can write up here to promenade. Starboard side, lifeboat station number 11. We've got odd numbers here on the starboard side, even numbers on the port side. Very easy to remember. Another thing, don't use the elevator in case of a power failure of the ship listening. If you're far away from your cabins, in one of the public rooms, you just come right up here and we'll provide you with a life jacket from one of the trunks up here. If you're in your cabin, it's remember so to bun, put on some warm clothes. And one last thing, it's a very important. Don't you think she's a little young? If you have to jump, take a firm grip, real life jacket, 
Bend your knees and say a prayer. Thank you. I thought twins were just babies. I didn't know they got old. Everybody gets old, Truman Paul. Except for certain young girls. Are we still talking about the girl on the deck? Yeah. Don't she call? She was too young. She was not. I'm telling you, she was practically my age. She was not your age, Toby. <laughs> she was too young. I like him that way. All I did was look at her. Who? Some girl on the deck. You know, the one with the pants too tight? Men like them tight. Not that tight. It's a matter of personal taste again. It's a matter of medical fact. You can get a yeast infection if your pants are too tight. Fortunately, we have an infirmary on board. Evening. Here we are. What's a yeast infection? It's something we don't discuss on the way to dinner. It's a disease that's transmitted by intimate contact. Good evening. Can even be transmitted by towels. Tildy, all I did was look at her. It was the way you looked at her. Can we drop this, please? See how nicely everybody's dressed? <laughs> Tuxedos. Oh, look at this. Uh, name, please. Hannah. Uh, party of five. Party of four. We indicate you requested a table for five. Oh, right, yes, I did. Table for five. Ah, very good. Uh, this way, sir, please. Yo. Mm -hmm. Hi, how are you? Why do we have a table for five? Good, good evening. Daddy, why do we have a table for five? Well, I just thought it might be a nice idea to have an extra chair, too. Just in case we, uh... We ran into some lonely person. We have to have someone sit with us? Someone's taking the Who's food. sitting with us? I don't want that girl with the tight pants sitting with us. Someone's going to sit with us? Yeah. That girl's going to sit with us. What girls? Will you, will you please take it? You just calm down here. What's table, going on? Your sir. Uh, your waiter will be Ugo. Uh, bon appetit. Ugo. <laughs> okay, come on, let's go. Sit down. Let's go. Here it is. Sit over here. Why do I have to sit next to the empty chair? You're the one who wanted it. Look, is there something wrong with providing a little space in our lives to help somebody who might be traveling alone? Can you imagine what it would be like if you were alone on a big ship like this, filled with nothing but strangers? Now, let's be a little generous here. We're big-hearted people. Okay. How about him? Who? That guy right there. Good. <laughs> Good. Okay. What about him? He looks pretty lonely to me. Daddy, he does. Some people like to be alone. Big ship like this, filled with strangers. Mm. Looks like he's about to cry. He's not about to cry. He has a cold. You want to sit next to somebody who has a cold? Do you want to spend your trip that way, catching an old man's cold? Well, if someone has to sit here. Nobody has to sit there, Tilly. Is that the girl? Well, that's great. She's all set. She's got plenty of company now. I don't have to worry about her. <clears throat> Let's go. What is it? Champagne. We should drink it? Why not? We're not allowed. Who says? Mom and Mitchell. Mom and Mitchell. Are they on this trip? I don't see them anywhere. Come on. Let's make a toast now. <laughs> To new beginnings. What's the matter? It's very good champagne. Look at this. Watch. You get to go out, we have to stay here. Because I'm a grown-up, and that's what grown-ups do. They go out. There's nowhere to go. I'm looking for that girl again. Let me come with you, Dad. It's bedtime, fellas. But we're in the middle of the ocean. Why can't I go with you? Because I'm going out to a bar. Of course he's going to the bar. Why can't I go to a bar? Why can't you stay here? 
Why can't you? Go surfing at the bar. I'm not a baby, you know. Too young to be served at a bar, Trump. Bullshit. Just let him go. Let him get a yeast infection. I don't want him to go. I want him to stay here. Fellas, <clears throat> listen to me. Your father, James Paul Tan III, is going to go upstairs and do whatever it is grown-ups do with whatever he finds up there to do it with, you see? And if he gets a disease, it's his fault, and he'll be responsible for it because it's his vacation, too. Understand that? What if I get scared? Well, you won't get scared. You know why? Because you're going to be asleep. I'm not tired. Then read a book. You got 100 pounds of books in there. Come on, we'll find one. Come on. No. What is it, Truman? It's OK. Just go out. Go out. What is it? Something about the books? He's got dirty books and dirty magazines. That's what he's got in there. Can't read. You're not supposed to tell. Wait a minute, what? You promised you wouldn't tell. I didn't promise him anything. You have to make him look stupid, don't you? Hey, wait a second. What, what's going on here? Like I said, he can't read. He's got a whole trunk full of books. What's in the blue trunk? Blocks. With phonetics on them. He has a learning disability. He was held back in the third grade last year. And if he doesn't make some progress this summer, then he's going to have to go to a special school next year. Why wasn't I told about this? It's very humiliating. I didn't want you to know. Hey, True. Truman, I made him tell me. Don't feel bad. Look, did you know, Truman, that Albert Einstein, when he was a, a child, they thought he was going to grow up to be stupid, smartest man in the world. And uh, people told Sophia Loren for years that she was going to be ugly. And what sense did that make? You see, there's nothing that's not solvable. Truman. I'll never read. I can't do it. I don't want you to say can't. Never say can't, Truman. You, of course you'll learn to read. I'll teach you to read. Good. That's soft. Now go to bed. Go to bed. Don't worry. Spill. How are you? Jim Tanner. <clears throat> yeah, get the Aunt Sophie. I picked that up from Kelly. You what? <laughs> I beg your pardon, you're my Aunt Sophie? Well, Soph, how are things? I do 
a turn? You're very lovely. Jagar Spinsk. Sweet, are you a Swedish girl? Jagar Spinsk. Oh, thank God. <laughs> I speak Swedish, you know. Yeah, I spend a lot of time in the country there. But then I, in the mornings, I get up, no sun. I go to sleep in the evenings, no sun. You know what I mean? <laughs> After a while, you know, I just decided to cash it in. I took out my big gun and shot myself in the head. <laughs> I can understand all about the suicide rate. I don't speak no English very good. Let's go to bed, kids. Dad, 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 the ship's leaking. There's water on the floor. There is, Dad. There's water on the floor. It's the bathroom. I think it's the shower. No, no, it's from the leak in the ship. I want you to get your butts downstairs right now. Get back away from me. When are you coming down? Let's go, Except now. I'm pink. coming down now. Before I really lose my temper, let's go. Let's go. Toby, look at the shark! Oh my gosh, if it was a real shark, it would be... Oh, look at these! Well, Dee, look at them. Don't, don't take too many, okay? Children are probably going swimming after breakfast. How deep is the water? Do you think it's real water or seawater? I don't know. Dad, do you think it's real water or seawater? I don't think we're going to Seawater, I'm not going to make it. Seawater is all our sharks. Well, I'm not in school and you're going to play. Seawater, I don't want to go to school. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Don't you guys ever talk to each other? I haven't had my coffee yet. I just like to be quiet until I've had my coffee. That's the way I am in the morning, okay? Please don't do that or I'll throw it off the ship. Thank you. Dad, what are we going to do after breakfast? We're gonna find a little space. That's what I do after I've had my coffee. Find space. Don't use this stuff. He said use but baby it's mineral oil. oil. Baby, but baby oil. oil. Baby it's mineral oil, Bernie. He's thinking about it. You are Guten Morgen. Gehen wir schwimmen heute? Ja, gerne. Ah, fühlt man sich gut an. Guten Morgen. Guten Morgen. Break in English? <laughs> nice day! It's a wonderful day. Well, you do speak English. Yeah. Not German. Not German. I thought you were German. I'm not. Where are you from? New York. You have an accent. Yeah? <laughs> yes. I was born in France. Oh, French. Très bien. Très bien. Very good. <laughs> I was born in France and you said French. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I do that when I like people. I saw you last night with your children, toasting champagne. 
It was nice. And leaving the nightclub early to put them to bed, I like that. It's so nice to see a man who really cares for his children. You seem to enjoy them. Oh, yeah, we have a lot of fun. That's nice. Yeah, we really hit it off, my kids and me. I can see. Are you alone? Mm-hmm. I saw an empty chair at your table. Oh, that's... They made a mistake, I guess. I'm alone. <laughs> I feel like I am rowing the ship. <laughs> it's funny. Yeah. Come and try. <laughs> of course. <laughs> oh, boy. It looks like that, no? Oh, yeah. That's great. <laughs> should be some guy up on top of the whip. You know? you know that joke about the good news and the bad news? No. The good news is the rowers are going to have steak for breakfast. The bad news... Is after breakfast, the captain wants to go water skiing. <laughs> you know, water ski, very fast. <laughs> I didn't like that joke either. What is water skiing? <laughs> it's when you ski in the, on the water and the... I'm teasing. Oh. Are you here with somebody? <laughs> because <laughs> uh, I'm in good shape. <laughs> I am with the Metropolitan Museum, classical too. I saw the King Tut exhibit and signed up. I thought it would be great. Uh -huh. Now I'm working, I'm traveling with mummies. Have you seen them? I am not even sure they are breathing. You mean the people you're eating with at night? Your table? You should come and uh, have dinner with us sometime. I would be very disappointed. At least four of them want to marry me. You in the market? Not really. Too busy, I'm afraid. I hardly have time for a night out to think of a husband. <laughs> you know, not all of us divorced women are so lucky to have such a devoted ex-husband. Thank like you. My girl sees the father maybe a weekend, once in a while, when he goes to town. A phone call on their birthdays. I'm sure you know the time. Anyway, to see you and your children restores my faith. My name is Marie. Uh, <laughs> JP Tan. JP? James. Hello. Hello. Well, goodbye. Goodbye. Au revoir. <laughs> Au revoir. <laughs> Très bien. He's still looking at her. Men always watch women when they walk away. How come? Their butt. Their butt? I sure hope you don't get that way to me, Mom. Are you kidding? Why would I want to look at a butt? <laughs> Truman, Paul! I want to see you. Don't you go away. No. Daddy's calling you, Truman. No, he's not. He's calling you. Oh, jeez. Oh, darn. I told you I can't do it. Of course you can't, Truman. It's simple. Not for me. Truman, the word is policeman, right? Okay. I'll tell you what. I'll give you the first letter. Here. P for P. And there it is. Okay. Now we have the beginning. Now what comes next? Policeman. What do you think comes next? Po 
policeman. Ash? No, Truman, now, there's no S here. Look, there's no S among these letters, is there? <clears throat> there's no S. And we, we, we're dealing with just these letters here, okay? Watch my mouth, watch, watch, watch. Policeman. Policeman. A? No, Truman. Not policeman. Not policeman. 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 George, I can't. I want you to stop saying can't, Truman. Can't means won't. You understand that? There's nothing in this world that you can't do if you really set your mind to it. If you want to do it. That's the whole key. If you want to do it. Do you want to learn to read, Truman? Or don't you? Yeah. Then you will. I won't. Concentrate. Come on. I can't. You're going to read before this trip is over. You understand that, Truman? Because you're going to put in the kind of effort that people have to put into things to get results. You're not going to float around the ocean here saying, I can't, I can't, I can't. I can't! Truman? Truman, stop! You're Mr. Tannen, aren't you, sir? Yes. Can I speak with you for a minute, sir? I'm in a bit of a hurry. Well, right let me now. take a second, sir. I haven't got time to talk right now. I've been asked by the captain to speak to you about your son, sir. The Chinese boy. What about him? He was asked to leave three different locations of the ship today, sir. What do you mean by that? He was asked to leave the pool because he was a bother to the other passengers. He was asked to leave the galley, which is not accessible to passengers, and from where he was taking food. He was asked to leave the bar, where he ordered two pina coladas, signed for them, used false identification, and said he was 22 years of age. I just felt you should be advised about it, sir. Thank you. Have you seen Truman before? No. Where's Tildy? Talking to the old man. What old man? One meets alone. His wife was supposed to come with him, but she died instead. You mad? Yeah, I'm mad. What the hell were you doing in the bar at Pina Coladas? Me? Yeah, you. Who said that? You're telling me you weren't? So what's the big deal? The big deal is you're 14 years old. Big deal? Yeah, big deal. And what the hell are you doing bothering people at the pool and swiping food from the galley? What's going on with you? And how do you get off using an ID that says you're 22 years old? Put the gun down. I want it, the ID. Hand it over. I don't have it. One of us is going to tear it up. I want the whole thing. I want it in pieces. It cost me a lot of money. I want it. You know what it took me to get you on this ship? You especially because you're not a citizen yet? I had to, I had to wait on line in embassies. Every Wednesday and Friday for two months. You think you're gonna pay me back for that by... Kiss off, man. Sit down. Don't you talk to me like that. Why not? Because I'm your father. Who says? Daddy? This is Mr. Peachum. Can you use our extra chair today? I told him you ordered an extra chair. Tildy, we're having a few problems here today. But I invited him. What's that? I say, this might not be the best day. Oh? To have lunch with us. Perhaps some other day. Oh, no problem. Uh, no problem. You just let me know. How could you do that to him? I'm sorry, Tildy. But you said that chair is for lonely people. Lonely girl. I've had just about enough from you. He was so happy when I invited him. I'm not eating. Can I go to my room? How could you do that? You want him, go get him back. Go get him back. Go get him back and eat with him. Do whatever you want. You, you, want, to, you want to go to your room? Go to your room. You don't want to eat? Fine, I'm not hungry either. 
I just wanted to have a good time here. That's all the hell I wanted to have. But I see it's not in the cards. So you just do whatever the hell you want. It's no way to talk to children. You're right, Tilly. I don't know how to talk to children. I never did. Call her mom. Okay. The captain said we needed your permission. You got it. Thank you. You're welcome. We'll play check during dinner so you don't have to look at us. I saw you from down there and came up. New parties for you? Not easy being a parent, is it? No, it isn't. Sometimes with my girls, I, I'm so overwhelmed. I think I could scream. I actually have visions of running away. That's why I'm in this cause. My friends talked me into it. They said I, I was going to be crazy if I didn't get away. Hello. Hello. So. So. My girls get very strange when they see me with another man. They don't like it. Is it the same for you? I mean, when they see you with a woman? They don't like it. I suppose it's their loyalty to the other parents. But they get very angry. Especially if they sense that I am interested. So I don't get often involved. I'm not even sure I know how to go about it anymore. I suppose they, they would be angry with me right now. When you speak a foreign language, it's so difficult to be subtle. And that's what I would like to be now. That's what I feel. 
I'm stupid. I told you, I... I don't know how to do this anymore. You're doing great. Don't go away. Listen, do you want to have a drink? Let's have a drink. Come on. She ought to be home soon. Oh, is Mitchell there? No, he has to go to Cleveland. What's going on? Oh, it's raining cats and dogs here. You ain't missing a thing. Your mom's gonna be sick if she missed you. What a shame. Well, do you know when our mom will be home? Well, I don't know. She should have been home a while ago. Dear Kathleen, I'm writing to you because you are the only person in the world who I have my children in common with, and the only person who knows me well enough so that my admissions of failure will come as no surprise. I'm afraid you were right, Kathleen. I don't really have what it takes to be a part of their lives. I guess I'm more like an uncle than a father lovable at a distance close up I just can't seem to do anything right how odd it is to find myself speaking so intimately with you feeling so close I suppose it has to do with them how much of them reminds me of you Tildy who has your strong no-nonsense nature 
Truman Paul, who is every bit as frightened as the deepest, softest parts of you. And Tron, whose very presence serves as a reminder of the belief we both once had in Santa Claus and the Tooth Fairy and the, the basic rightness of anything the two of us decided to do. I miss you, Kathy. Dear Jesus, I do. We can. I got an idea. Let's sit down. See what you think of this one. Suppose we just thought of each other as friends. Friends, you know? You know what you have to do to keep a friend? You gotta be nice to him, right? Let's just forget the father stuff. I don't know how to deal with that. I don't know. I don't know what to do, but we got to do something different. Otherwise, we won't make it through this thing. So you just call me JP. We'll try that. I mean, what's greater than friendship? So from now on, we'll just be four friends taking a vacation together. And we're going to have the best time we had in our lives. What do you think of that? I think that's nice, Jim. Call me JP. JP. JP to me, friends. How do you do? Okay, we're friends, see? Okay, JP. All right. All right. Fine, JP. All right, that's wonderful. I think we got a beat on this thing. We're back on our feet again. This is my friend, Matilda. Hello, Matilda. Marie, and this is my friend, Trump. Hi, Marie. So what are you doing? What's all this? We go to Rome for three days. We're going to Rome for an hour and a half. Want to come? Oh, it's not enough. Are you not coming back to the ship? Yes. We catch up the ship in Athens. Uh, well, do you have a good time. We'll see you now. Yes, see you in Greece. It's have a nice good time. to see you. See you. Bye. Okay, guys. You two certainly seem friendly. You are friendly. When did you get so friendly? Oh, I'm a friendly person. <laughs> See, this guy's crazy about me. Yeah, it's a wonderful thought. Yeah, I want to go to Rome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hello. 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 What is your name? Erico. Erico? Erico. Erico. Watch it, watch it, watch it! Wrong problem. Watch it! Wrong problem. You have to understand, this is Italian. They come from a, a long line of bad drivers ever since the chariots. Remember Ben-Hur? Actually, they're driving much better since they got rid of the horses. <laughs> you see, most of this place, they call it ruins, right? And this wasn't like it. Well, we see it now. This was underground. What you're looking at now is all underground, and there was a stage above it, and the lions and the Christians were fighting it out. And and up there, Cleopatra was sitting up there with Julius Caesar, see? And Julius right. Caesar, he was the big shot. And when the lions and the Christians would fight, the lion would jump on the Christian, and, the, and then he'd wait. He'd, so he'd wait, because the crowd would be looking at him, and all the focus would be on the lion, and the lion would stop, and he would look up, he'd look up to Julius Caesar, see, to get the answer. And Julius Caesar would raise his thumb, 
and it was either, you know, this way or this way. And if he went this way, that means the Christian could go. If it was this way, that means he had it. That, that guy was history. So sometimes Julius Caesar would look around and go, and they'd go crazy. Yes, yes, kill him, kill him. How does the lion know to look up for a signal? How are you going to learn anything, Truman, if you expect me to make sense? <laughs> gets low on the horizon and the way the water holes kick up in a high wind and that's what everyone sees right from their front window a picture window that looks out on a massive golf course stop at Truman with gently rolling hills flags flapping in the breeze and the whole thing is called village green how do people get their cars to the houses if it's surrounded by grass? That's a good question, Truman. They park their car in a community parking lot and they drive golf carts right to their front door. How do they keep the golf balls from smashing the windows? It's a great idea, Jim. Well, I haven't got it all worked out yet, but basically people are going to love it. Special glass, that's how. Never heard of special glass? They'll have to wear helmets if they want to have a barbecue on the patio. Yeah, well... It's time to go to sleep, guys. Like... That's not how. What do you mean, that's not how? That's the way I do it. Here. Like this. Oh, Truman, <laughs> I am floating. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Cannon? Yeah? You wanted the communications room. Okay. That's right, the Vista Fjord opera. All right, stand by, please. <laughs> Mr. Tennant. Yeah? Your call is from Athens. Please use that phone. Hello? Who? I can't. How's that? Hello? What? Uh, can you speak? Can you speak louder, please? Mitchell? Yes, this is Jim. You're in Athens? What are you doing in Greece? You what? She what? I can't... Is she all right? right? Is she all right? She what? Did you... Mitchell, did you say... Yes, I'm here. No, I don't. Yes, I... I think that's a good... Uh, when do we get to Greece? Uh, 1,300 hours. Uh, one o'clock tomorrow afternoon. Sir. One o'clock? Yes. All right, I will. Yes, I think it's best that we do. She was? 
already? Yes, of course, I am. I know you couldn't. I know you do. Uh, hello? 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 We, we lost each other. We lost each other. Good. 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 <laughs> Okay, okay, this is almost happening. Come on, you guys, show a little enthusiasm. You look so bored. Come on, this is for your dad. He's gonna think you're having a terrible time. Come on, come on, Trung, can you smile a little? Trung, Trung and Paul, can you stand up? What are you doing? Look at this ring. Look at look what I found. Hey, Trung, where'd you find that? There. Gosh, that's neat. Look at it. Come on, one time, smile. You're the Let's go. Come on. I've gone to Detroit, Cleveland. I just spoke to her on the phone to let her know where I was. But it was a Friday, and I hadn't bothered to let my office know. No, it was almost three days before anyone found me. I thought it was best to bury her. And come here and break the news to the children. Bring them back. Have a memorial service later. I hope you understand. I, uh... I booked room for all of us at the hotel. I'd like to go back to the ship this afternoon, get the kids off, and uh, fly them home in the morning. No, I have a room for you as well. I've booked you right along with us to New York with a ticket that goes on to California. I, uh, I spoke to a psychiatrist. He said they're gonna need all the support they can get. That's why I made this trip on his advice to uh, give him some reassurance that life's going to go on. It'll still be their house to go back to, their rooms, their friends, their school, their housekeeper. She's like a second mother to them. It's very important that all things remain equal. What is it, Jim? I'd like to be alone with him tonight. I don't think that's a good idea. I want to. I'm afraid I have to say no, Jim. I'm sorry, but I have to be firm about this. I came here to break the news to them and to escort them home, but... Uh, it wasn't easy for me to do that, but I feel that's what I have to do. I feel that's what Kathleen would have wanted me to do. Maybe she would have wanted me to tell her. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure she would have wanted both of us to. Well, how the hell do you know? I spent half my life with her. You knew her five years. We met when she was, she was 17. 
So how the hell do you know what she would want us to do? The children need strength, Jim. I want this night with them. I don't think you're up to it. I'll be fine. Just want to be with them alone. Maybe for more than just one night, maybe a couple of nights. I don't know. Or well, is it uh, two nights now or what? Until I'm ready. Until I'm ready. Anything else, gentlemen? Oh, no, I... Thank you. Thank you. Well, I'm not going to uh, subject the children to a drama between you and me. They have enough grief in store for them. If you need more time with them, I'll uh, respect that. If you feel you have to tell them yourself, I'll, I'll honor that as well. Your next stop's Cairo. I'll be there at the... Uh, Hilton. If I don't hear from you, I'll go on to the stop after that. It's Tunis. Three more days. That should be time enough. I'll be waiting there at the docks to take them home. I'll get it. I got it. I'll get it. It's done. This time I wouldn't blow it that I'd be the world's greatest husband, the best lover, the best provider, the best father. You can still be the best father. You are a wonderful father. Let me tell you something, Marie. I'm a father like your ex-husband is a father. What do you mean? I mean it's the same. Occasional weekends when I pass through town. That's how often I see him. Phone calls on their birthdays. That's the kind of father I am. 
That can't be true. It is true. It is true. You see us toasting champagne. Don't mistake that. We're just four people trying to make the best of it, that's all. What are you telling me? This is the first time I've spent more than five days with them in over four years. And I spent a lot of that counting the days till it's over. I'm a disaster. I always have been. Always was. I always was. You think I'm a good father? I still do. You don't hear what I'm telling you. Yes, I do. But they adore you. And you adore them. It's obvious. It's plain to see. You should see their eyes light up when you come near. You think you are like my ex-husband? Not at all. You should see my girls with their father. At least your children fight with you. My girls? Very polite. Nobody talks, nobody smiles, nobody fights. That's a man who doesn't know how to be a father. You'll do fine with them. You'll do well. Anyway, you don't have any choice, do you? They are your children. They belong to you. They are yours forever. I paid six dollars for a handmade cap. What's a way? Give me some food. It's a great cap. 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 Euripides and Sophocles or Socrates. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's sock it to me. <laughs> yeah, sock it to me. <laughs> Did I say Euripides? Euripides? What'd you rip? You pay it. <laughs> hey, come on, don't jerk around. If you want to learn something, you gotta concentrate. She was stupid. She was so dumb. She wasn't. She was nice and she was trying very hard. <laughs> and I found a ring. Yeah, you found it right on the ground. I bet it's worth a lot of money. It's not worth anything. I bet it is. He always finds stuff. I'm always lucky. Yeah, Daddy's always lucky. Can I have a tilde? I think it's a cherry. Yeah. It'll be terrific. Come on. 
Come on, Dad. Just watch my feet. There you go. That's it. Okay. Now you look up and look up. And see if you can still dance. Such a beautiful lady, Matilda. James Cannon. You once told me that your kids drove you crazy. That your friends made you go on this trip because they thought you were going to go crazy. Am I bothering you? No. Did you say that? Yes. You said that being alone with him was too much for you. You said that, right? That you didn't have time to do anything, to see anyone. That you were just overwhelmed. Wasn't that the word you used? Overwhelmed. What if there was someone who your kids really liked? I mean, really liked, loved. Who was wonderful with them. And wouldn't be driven crazy by them, wouldn't be overwhelmed. And you knew in your heart you would be overwhelmed. And you weren't sure you'd be any good for them at all. You didn't know what was the right thing to do, what was the wrong thing to do. And there was this person. And all he wanted, I mean, you could still see your kids whenever you wanted. You know, it's not like they were being taken away from you because all he wanted was just to take care of them. I would fight him to the death. What are you doing tomorrow? I don't know. Good, I'll call you. Thanks. Said you want to I meet want, me on I the dock. There's a plane from New York at 12:30. We're not ready to go to New York. I want to talk. Think about it, if you know what I mean. 
things feel different now. Kathleen kind of held everything together. She and I were a family, and then... And now there's just you, and there's me. And there's the children. Uh... Do you understand what I'm saying? I think so. You're suggesting a change in the current custody agreement. I'm just exploring. I'd like to know what you think. And I'm eager to tell you. I won't allow it. I simply won't do it. I won't agree. No, you can take me to court. You can, uh, you can fight me for them. And ruin everyone in the process. And frankly, you wouldn't stand a chance. Why do you say that? Because I know the law. But I'm, I'm the father. That's a matter of definition. In biology. Truman Paul has a fish tank full of guppies. And they have babies, too. But I wouldn't call those fathers swimming around in there. How do you intend to support them? Let's get down to that. Okay. Because when it comes to a court of law, that's what counts most, especially if the father has abandoned ship. Okay. Well... And don't give me that story about your $200,000 escrow, because I've checked you out. You owe more than that to the Franken Savings Bank. Now, we're talking about tutors and teachers and ballet lessons, housekeepers and babysitters, team uniforms, orthodontists, special schools. Now, Truman Paul has a learning disability. I know about that. Oh, I'm surprised you do. I I've been working with him. I'm not impressed. Where were you when his learning disability started? When he needed your support and reassurance. When he wished more than anything that you could see him in his school play. Or Tildy. When she prayed that you might surprise her and show up at a recital. Or Tron at one of his soccer games. Where were you when it was time for having tonsils out? And Tildy cried so piteously that they had to put her in a soundproof room. Did you know about any of that? And when she came out of the anesthesia, she wept for you. Where were you? God damn you, son of a bitch, when I held those children in my arms and I reassured them that you still loved them. Even though on their birthdays you were nowhere to be found. Just one time. Where were you? Where were you? God damn it, where were you? I'm a damn good lawyer. And if I had to, I could make Mother Teresa look unfit to run an orphanage without telling a single lie. And you... I gotta tell you, you're a piece of cake. I love them, Mitchell. You don't even know them. It's not true. What are their friends' names? Who are their teachers? What do they dream about at night? What do you touch each one of them make a giggle? Which ones had the chicken pox? Which ones had the mumps? I'm talking about the future. So am I! So am I. Their college educations are assured. The money's in the bank. I've put a lot into those children, and I intend to put in a lot more. I'm not going to back down on this. And I'll let you, uh, read why. I was hoping to, uh, spare you this. But it could clear up any doubts you might have about what Kathleen would have wanted. I think we'll both agree that she would have known what's best. See, I love them, too. More than you'll ever know. Or 
understand. Well, I won't be uh, following you anymore. The end of your trip is Genoa. And that's where I'll be waiting. feeling a kind of melancholy and for reasons that I don't fully comprehend have been reflecting on my own mortality and counting all these things for which I'm grateful mostly Mitchell it's for you the gift you've given me and the children of knowing a man whose arms and heart are big enough to shelter us all and who manages the world with the same gentle authority that he manages the tantrum of a child. You've taken us in as though we were your own. And we've become your own. Your life is our life. And what a warm and safe and comforting life that is. I look around me and see how blessed I am. And I don't want to take these blessings for granted. I want you to know that I love you. And that I'm grateful to you. You came into my life when I needed you, rescued us and nurtured us, and have given me the peace of mind of knowing that, at last, I have a husband, and my children have a father. Your devoted Kathleen. waiting for you to see the pyramids. Why did they do these? 
to try and make themselves permanent, Truman. It worked. Did it? Look, its face is half gone. One day there'll be nothing here except sand. These were just a man's dreams, that's all they were. A man's dreams won't keep him alive. Nothing's permanent. Nothing stays the same. You can never know what's gonna happen next. The only thing you can ever be sure of is that whatever you think is going to happen, probably won't. I didn't know that when I was your age. I thought everything worked out the way you wanted it to. Like my marriage to your mom, for instance. I thought it was a permanent thing. I really thought we had something as permanent as these pyramids, or maybe more, but it wasn't. I lost her because those things happen. She couldn't be in my life any longer the way I wished she would. But life went on. It wasn't too easy, but it went on, as it always must, no matter what. The wonderful thing about having you children is that your mother and I and the proof of our love for each other live on because a part of each of us is, is in you. I can see, I can see Kathleen in your eyes looking out at me and hear her in your voices. So she's always around, no matter where she is, no matter where. I wasn't planning on talking about this right now, but I, I can't keep it to myself any longer. It's the most awful thing you'll ever hear. Your mom, who I dearly loved, and who you dearly love, has had to leave all our lives now, all of ours. A week ago, she was taking the dog to the vet. There was a rainstorm and the car went out of control. Something happened. She was killed. She was killed instantly. There was no pain. No, no, no! Does Mitchell know? Yes, he does. He'll be waiting in Genoa to take you home.
This makes it go away. Dreams about a white kangaroo. Has long fingernails. Whiskers that are stiff and sharp like needles. And very long teeth. Has a dead baby in its pouch. And it chases him. Isn't that awful? He has to suffer like that? He should be allowed to feel safe in his sleep. Very lucky to have you, Tilly. <laughs> Daddy! <laughs> Daddy! <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> okay. To repeat, we at the Port of Tunis, the tenders have been going ashore from Saint Helens. Trunk, you see the mountain from Tunis. You okay? It's time for breakfast. Wake up, What's Truman, tell me. Let's go. Please, Come on. Dad. Come on, get up, get up. Daddy. Did anybody see Trunk last night? His clothes are gone. His room is empty. What's wrong? Where did you last see him? Now you think. think. I didn't see him. He did this once at home, Dad. Bring he up. ran away. Mitchell caught him at the bus station. He said he was going to California to see you. Well, he's not taking a bus to California from here. Let's go. Come on. Let's go. He went ashore in the first launch, sir. And you let a kid off here on his own, carrying a duffel bag over his arm? What the hell is wrong with you people? Haven't you got any sense? Where the hell are we, anyway? Tunis, sir. Get me ashore right now. There's always a launch waiting, sir. How long is the ship here? Till nightfall, sir. He did ask where the market was.
Wait, stay with me, stay with me. Come here. Come here. Where are you? Kill me. the crap knocked out of you. What do you care? You don't want me. Go. Let me go. Just forget about me. No. What's different? You don't want me. It's not true. You don't want to be with me. It has nothing to do with wanting. There are things here you're not aware of. You don't want me. It has nothing to do with wanting. There's a big difference between wanting and being able. I can't give you the things that he can give you. Can you understand that? It's not that I don't want to. It's that I can't. Can't means won't. You said so. That's what you told me. If you really wanted to do something, you could Maybe do it. Maybe I was it. wrong, Truman. Maybe wanting isn't enough. You're unhappy living with Mitchell. You tell me there's something wrong with the way he treats you, I'll claim you right here on the spot. Now, you tell me, honestly. Now. Mitchell inherited me. My own father left me. You're the only one who ever chose me. And don't tell me you're not my father. You're my friend. You think I let you adopt me because I want a friend? I don't need friends like you. I need fathers like you. Okay, okay, okay. Easy. Easy. We're just upset now, that's all. We're going to get through it. We're just upset. Feeling sick. I think I should stay with him. You hungry? I'll turn your sheets down for you. That'd be a nice idea. Please have your luggage ready to be taken off from Genoa by noon. Truman? Is that right? Damn close, I'll tell you that. See what I could do if I want her. Oh, you're a terrific person. But Hello, everybody. Hi, stranger. 
<laughs> I was going to join you for the last breakfast, but I see your empty chair is gone. Yeah, we finally got them to take it away. But we can uh, get you another chair. Try. No, no, I don't want to disturb you. I was looking all over for you. I wanted to talk to you. You did? Yes. I just wanted to say thank you. I wanted me to kiss, guys. Well, goodbye. Bye, Marie. Bye, Marie. I hope we see each other, each other again. Au revoir. Au revoir. Mitch? You said you were bringing them. They're right over there waiting for us. I just wanted to take a minute to tell you I'm keeping them. There's only one thing you and I forgot to consider, and that's what they wanted. To take me to court, I'm willing to do battle. I know in my heart I'll win. The teachers are Miss Malchus, Mrs. Seferio, Mr. Day. Tildy's best friend is named Sarah. Trung is sweet on a girl named Janine. I learned all this this morning. And that Truman dreams of a white kangaroo that's been chasing him for about four years now. The length of time I've been away from home. I realize this doesn't make me an expert. But I'm ready to learn. They love you. And I love them. Yeah. You and I got a lot in common.
Mitch, let's do them some good. Hey, gang, look who I found. Hi, you know this character?